With Palantir's stock price up over 32% in the last month, on the back of news that it's going to be included in the S&P 500, the stock is now looking more than ever like it's overvalued. So today we're going to talk about that inclusion into the S&P 500 and the effect that it can have on a company's stock price. We'll also discuss the news of Peter Thiel selling around $1 billion worth of Palantir stock. And finally, we'll take a look at Palantir's price targets as well as their upcoming earnings and what you really need to pay attention to for whether this stock is overvalued or not. So if you enjoy the video, drop a like down below, and if you want to see more videos like this one, make sure to subscribe. As I mentioned in the intro, Palantir is up over 32% in the last month alone, and it gets even more insane when you zoom out, because in the last 6 months, Palantir is up almost 75%, and year to date, Palantir is up almost 150%, and this gets even more insane when you look at the last 2 Two years because in 2023 Palantir went up over 150% over the course of the year and now it has gone up another 150% through 10 months of 2024 for a total return in the last year and a half of over 500%. This more recent move up in Palantir's stock price comes from the fact that S&P Global announced a month ago that Palantir would be added to the S&P 500. This announcement included the addition of Palantir Palantir and Dell into the S&P 500 while removing American Airlines and Etsy. And the reason S&P 500 inclusion is so important is because of these three ETFs, SPY, VOO, and IVV. These are the three largest ETFs in the world, with each having over $500 billion of assets under management. And the three asset managers for these ETFs are none other than Vanguard, State Street Capital, and Black. BlackRock. These are three companies that people over the course of the last year have claimed to have way too much control over US companies. That's a video for a different time, but it's important to keep in mind that when companies are added to the S&P 500, these ETFs have to rebalance their portfolios to add those new companies into their ETFs. Between these three ETFs, you're talking about $1.5 trillion. And even though Palantir only makes up a fraction of a percent of the S&P 500, you're still talking about millions and millions of dollars that's flooding into the company and driving up the stock price. So when you add in this buying pressure into the stock and the stock soaring up 30% in the last month, a lot of investors are starting to question whether Palantir is overvalued. And this gets even worse when you look at insider trading around the company because Peter Thiel over the course of last month has sold a lot of shares. Peter Thiel is one of the co-founders of Palantir, but on top of that, he also co-founded PayPal and is most well known for his early investment into meta platforms or Facebook at the time. So his advice and a lot of his buying and selling of stocks is taken very seriously from the investment community. And obviously $1 billion of sales is a lot of money. However, keep in mind that Peter Thiel is still one of the largest shareholders of Palantir and he did all of these sales as part of his 10B5-1 plan. What is a 10B5-1 plan? I asked the exact exact same question. So I went to Investopedia and it is a way for insiders of publicly traded companies to buy or sell company stock without violating insider trading laws. Basically, this is just a predetermined plan from the insider to sell a certain amount of shares at a specific price, amount, and date. And really what this boils down to is that Peter Thiel likely had planned to sell these shares before this large run-up that we saw in the stock price in the last month. However, However, one thing that may be a little more concerning for investors in Palantir than insider sales is analyst price targets around the company. The average price target is currently $27.67, with a high price target of $50 and a low price target of $9. I like to always validate this across a number of different sites. Here on MarketWatch, we have an average price target of $25.87, a high price target of $50, and a low price price target of $9. What this represents to the average price target is a downside potential from the current stock price of around 34%. There's only about 27% upside and to the low price target, there's about 77% downside. With Palantir's stock price up 30% in the last month, insiders selling, analysts not improving their price targets, and a forward P ratio of 95, the question really is, is Palantir overvalued? 
continued. But the thing that really matters is earnings. Palantir is expected to announce their earnings in early November, and analysts have an average EPS estimate of positive five cents. I believe that this estimate may be a little bit low because of three key metrics that really feed into each other. The first one up is commercial revenue. Commercial revenue grew by a total of 33% year over year and 55% when only considering US commercial customer revenue. Palantir really needs to continue to see 30 plus percent growth on their commercial revenue to really justify their valuation. The second metric that is fed by revenue growth is going to be their rule of 40. Remember that rule of 40 considers revenue growth and margin growth. Right now their rule of 40 is sitting at 64%. That is up year over year from 38%. That is a massive increase. If they can continue to see this percentage grow by increasing the revenue as well as increasing the margin that they take home from that revenue, that is going to help Palantir stock price and valuation in a major way. And both of those will ultimately feed into the most important metric for any company, that is their gap net income. Palantir has seen their gap net income increase in a substantial way in the course of the last year, bringing home 28.1 $1 million in Q2 of 2023, that number has since exploded to $134.1 million in the most recent quarter. As we continue to see revenue increase and margins increase, that will only have a compounding effect on Palantir's net income. With these recent moves up in Palantir's stock price, it has now moved up to my second highest yielding position with a total gain of 330%. As of right now, I don't plan to sell out of Palantir, but if something fundamentally changes in their next earnings announcement, I could look to lock in some of these gains. But with all of that said, I'm interested in your opinion. Let me know down below if you are buying, selling Palantir, if you think it's overvalued, undervalued, what your opinion is on the company. But keep in mind, do not buy a company just because I talked about it here on YouTube. Make sure you are doing your own research and looking into companies that meet your risk tolerance as well as your time horizon. With all of that said, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, drop a like down below. And if you want to see more videos like this one, make sure to subscribe. And as always, guys, have a wonderful rest of your day. And for the joke of the day, what do you call a dog who meditates? Check the comments down below for the answer. Thanks for watching.